This video talks about epinephrine, its different receptors, and how epinephrine works at different dosage. So let's get right into it. Epinephrine has four receptors, alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2. What is the function of alpha-1? Primarily. Primarily, alpha-1 is responsible for vasoconstriction. Primarily, alpha-2 is responsible for decreasing sympathetic flow. What about beta-1? Primarily, its effects is to increase heart rate, and beta-2 would be vasodilation and bronchodilation. So those are the primary effects, and it's important to categorize those like that to be able to understand how epinephrine works at different level of dosage. And there is three levels, low dose, intermediate dose, and high dose. So let's talk about low dosage first. At low dosage, a lot of people say that epinephrine behaves as isoproteronol. Okay? What is isoproteronol? Isoproteronol is actually a beta agonist, a non-selective beta agonist. So it does not matter if it's beta 1 or beta 2, they're going to be equally stimulated in isoproteronol. But that's isoproteronol. And I'll, I'll tell you why people make that... Um, make the conclusion that epinephrine acts like isoproteronol in a bit later. But let's talk about our receptors first. Just based on receptors, epinephrine has a higher effect on the beta receptors than the alpha receptors. So it will have a higher effect on beta 1 and beta 2 than alpha 1 and alpha 2. And if you ask me which of these two beta receptors epinephrine has a greater effect at low dose, my answer is going to be beta 1. There is going to be a greater beta 1 effect than beta 2. Then why do people say that low dose of epinephrine is like isoproteronol? Because that really is not the case, is it? Epinephrine at low dose has a greater beta 1 effect than beta 2, where isoproteronol, beta 1 and beta 2, has equal effects. And we'll understand that by looking at these two graphs. So what do we have here? We have blood pressure, and we have heart rate. Now this is our time on our x-axis. So this is our blood pressure, kind of average blood pressure right here, and this is where we're infusing low dose of epinephrine, okay, for both the graphs. So what do we see is happening to our heart rate? Let's talk about heart rate first because it's easier to understand. We know that beta-1 has a lot of effect um, at low dose, so as soon as we uh, infuse epinephrine into our system at low dose, the beta-1 receptors is going to be stimulated and the beta-1 is going to increase the contractility of the heart and we're going to have increased heart rate. That's the easy one. What about beta-2? What's going to happen to our blood pressure? Okay, now there's two receptors in the sympathetic system which takes care of blood pressure. To be quite honest, there's three ways it can change. First of all is that beta uh, Blood pressure is affected by alpha-1 receptors. How? Because it's a vasoconstrictor. It's affected by beta-1, beta-2 receptor. How? Because it causes uh, the opposite of alpha-1, which is vasodilation. Again, there is also reflex. So if heart rate is increased, a reflex is going to cause the blood pressure to increase or decrease and accordingly. So why is the blood pressure going down? at low dose of epinephrine. The reason for that is, we established right at the beginning, we said that the alpha receptors has less effect than beta one, beta receptors, okay? So in a war between alpha and beta, this is going to, alpha is going to try to vasoconstrict, where beta is going to vasodilate. But since more beta is going to be active, the beta is going to win over alpha. Okay, so the beta-2 receptor is going to win over alpha, and beta-2 receptor is going to cause vasodilation, and the heart rate is going to, sorry, the blood pressure is going to fall. Again, through our beta-1 receptors, at low dose of epinephrine, so at low dose of epinephrine, the beta-1 are being active right here. We have increased heart rate, and through beta-2 receptors, by winning the war between alpha 1 and beta 2, the blood pressure is going to drop because beta, beta receptors has a greater effect at low dose than at a higher dose. So now let's talk about our intermediate dose. 
in our intermediate dose, we are going to have alpha receptors equal to our beta receptors. I always like to start with heart rate or beta first. So let's talk about heart rate. Heart rate is predominantly um, affected by beta-1 receptors. And since alpha-1 is equal to alpha-2, we're going to see an increase in heart rate. So imagine this is where the infusion happened. And the heart rate at intermediate dose is going to be increased. Okay. What about blood pressure? So at intermediate dose, alpha receptors is going to be equal to beta receptors. Then it's fair to say that alpha 1 is going to be equal to beta 2. As a result, what's going to happen? Alpha 1 is, will try to increase the blood pressure. Beta 1 it will try to decrease the blood pressure, right? As a result, they're going to equal each other out, and we're going to see a flat line right here. We're going to see the blood pressure not changing, even though the infusion probably happened right here. So that's what's going to happen at intermediate level. Now let's talk about high level. At high dose, we're going to have greater alpha receptors than beta 1. So now what's going to happen to our heart rate and our blood pressure? So at high dose, for high dose let's talk about blood pressure first. We know that alpha is going to have greater effect than beta. So what are the two receptors that are acting for, um, for determining the blood pressure? They're going to be primarily, they're going to be alpha 1 and beta 2. And who is going to win the fight? Alpha 1. At high dose, alpha 1 is going to win the fight. So what's, going to ha what's alpha 1 going to try to do? Alpha 1 will try to vasoconstrict. As a result, the blood pressure is going to increase. So imagine this is our blood pressure right here. Sorry, it should be straight. Um, and let's say this is where infusion happened. And we're going to see increase in blood pressure. And that is through alpha 1. Now let's talk about heart rate. Whenever we're talking about heart rate, who's going to win the fight over alpha and beta? Obviously, it's going to be alpha. So beta is not going to increase the heart rate as much. So as a result, because blood pressure is going up and because beta 1 is not as stimulated like the low dosage, um, we are going to have, the heart is going to try to compensate for the increased blood pressure. As a result, we're going to see a drop in heart rate as we're infusing high dosage of uh, epinephrine. At this level, at high dosage, epinephrine works as norepinephrine. So if you were to draw a heart rate or blood pressure graph for norepinephrine, it would look exactly like how it is looking at high blood pressure.